Yo, yo, yo! What's up everyone, Full Animix here. Now my last video, I said that I wasn't going to review shows that were coming out because I said that a certain show might be good, but it ended up being bad. That was the main reason. So, um... Kind of breaking my own rule here. Basically, I've been loving quintessential quintuplets a little too much that I said, fuck it, I'm gonna read the manga. So I started reading where it left off in the anime. I have finally finished reading it and I have some shit to talk about. Obviously, later on in the video, I'll be talking about spoiler territory, but for now, I'm going to be talking about how I felt about the anime. The first season of quintessential quintuplets is a really fun generic harem show. For me, the first season is what all basic harem shows should be. You lay out a lame plot and you get straight into the story. Speaking of lame plot, Quintessential Quintuplets is about a smart loner who becomes a tutor for five quintuplets. As the show goes on, the quintuplets start developing feelings for our protagonist. Now, I've watched a lot of harem shows, good and bad, but Quintessential Quintuplets exceeds them all, mainly because it hooks people with the very first scene. The fact that we end up with one of the girls is the most revolutionary shit I've seen in anime. Do you know how much pain I've been through watching these shitty harem shows? Infinite Stratos, Trinity 7, To Loveru, Day to Live, We Never Learn, School days. Oh shit, what's this doing in my list? I can go on, but you get the point. When I first watched Quintessential Quintuplets for the first time, and I saw that wedding scene, I said, Fuck. Yes! Not only does this excite a lonely man's heart, but it also reassures the audience that there will be an ending to the show. Not a good one, but still an ending. Like I said before, the first season of Quintessential Quintuplets is very generic, but it's also a very good first season. It sets up the core foundations of the show and it develops the characters in an engaging way. Moving on to season two, it made me realize something. Quintessential Quintuplets is my favorite harem show ever. <laughs> a normal cliche season two of a show would have a dense ass MC and a plot that would basically go nowhere. On the surface, this show seems like a cliche harem anime, and for season one, it debatably is. But season two really steps it up. Before, the characters were okay and had a decent amount of development, but now, they're so much better. Which is the best part of quintessential quintuplets in general. It's the journey of these characters together. The characters start developing way more. We see their flaws and their insecurities. As well, the characters start breaking away from their stereotypes. Which is something I've been asking for for a very long time. A harem show that changes the status quo. Side rant segment. Dance ass motherfuckers. Like I said before, I've watched a lot of harem anime, and almost all of them have dense ass MCs. A very good example of this is Infinite Stratos' protagonist, Ichika. This man is just a plank of wood, I swear to god. He truly believes that every single one of these girls gripping onto him are his best friends, and it's just the most unrealistic shit ever. Yes, anime is deeply unrealistic, but this goes to a whole new level. Now, I'm not complaining that you can't have dense MCs in your anime. I think it can be done very well, like in quintuplets, but this man goes above and beyond. He doesn't just go past Mars, he goes to fucking Jupiter. He goes to Pluto, bro. He is that dense, and I hate it. But I also really like Infinite Stratos because the waifus in that show are fucking fire. Anyway, the protagonist in Quintessential Quintuplets differs from him in a very unique way and a very real way. Futuro was dense in season one, but then he starts seeing things at face value. The confession between Nino and Futuro is one of the best scenes in the anime. Futuro says to Nino that he doesn't know how to act around her because she loves him and he's never had someone who loved him. Him before. He fully admits straight up to her that he doesn't know how to act, which is why he was avoiding her. This is when he breaks away from the dense MC trope and starts acting like a real person. This is my favorite part of the show because it seems like a real moment that could happen in real life. Side rant over. Season 2 really shines on the character development for not just our protagonists, but for the Quins as well. But now, unfortunately, I have to go into spoiler territory. Now for all you people that are still watching the anime and don't want to get spoiled, skip to here. So if you don't want to get spoiled, skip now. Guys, I got a confession to make. I got spoiled for the ending of Quintessential Quintuplets. I didn't know how or where, but someone said, 
Yotsubo was the one who ended up with Futuro. But it didn't really ruin the show for me. Yes, I know who was going to win at that point, but I didn't really care who won. I just wanted to know how they won. That's what got me over the line to just pick up the manga and start reading it. And to be honest, I really didn't like it. Now, before all you fanboys come in and start complaining to me about my opinion, let me first talk about how I felt about all the Quins after finishing the manga, because it will lead into my problem with the ending. Let's start with Ichika. I hate Ichika so much. I'm gonna be real with you, she was my waifu in season 1. You know, I wasn't one of those Miku stands back then. I loved the older sister mature trope in anime when I watched it. And she was everything that embodied that. She was fine AF, you know? I fucking loved her. And then season 2 came along and just completely shit on my parade. <laughs> The first time I noticed there were cracks in her character was when she got in the way of Miku's first confession. Now obviously it doesn't really seem like she did it on purpose, but you know, she still got in the way, alright? She knew, but I didn't dislike her, you know? It was just a dick move, you know? It can be forgiven. Then she dresses up as Miku to tell Futuro that Ichika likes him as Miku, and that she supports the idea of them getting together as Miku. You know, that one, that one got me, that one, that one made me a little mad, you know? I really hated that, but you know, I, I was a big shield, I was still fine with her, everything was fine. Until the school trip came along. Oh my gosh. Not only does she get in the way of Miku again, but after she told Futuro that she was Reina and she was the girl she met back then. No, you weren't. <laughs> I know that you weren't. We all know that you weren't. The writer knew that you weren't, yet you say this and it just blows my mind. At this point, I'm completely done with her, all right? She tries to fix her mistake after this, but the damage is done, all right? The damage is done and you were dead to me. You were fully dead to me, F tier, let's move on. Now, I think this goes without saying, Nino is my waifu, all right? I'm just gonna say it, she's my waifu. I think I can speak for everyone saying that Nino wasn't the best Quinn, mostly because up until season one, she was treated as a rude psycho that didn't like Futuro. But in season two, it really just becomes the Nino show, and I love it. The reason why I probably like Nino the most is that her character is the best out of all the Quins. In season one, she's mostly a rude, bossy sister that I expect her to be, but only because she's very protective of her family and very cautious of people that she deems to be a threat to her family. This turns out to be a doubled edged sword sometimes as she comes off as a bit too overprotective. Ending her arc we find out at the camping trip that she has a connection to Futuro's past. This got me excited because Nino had the possibility of the legendary redemption arc that was transcribed in the sacred text of the Sundere. I got so happy, so fast. <laughs> and then when season two came along, we explored her character more in depth with the conversations she had with Futuro and Miku. We see her developing her traits of protecting her family even further, her letting go of the past and her recognition of Futuro. And then after that, we see Nino finally accepting her feelings with the best confession in the series. And she really just gets better from there. She helps Miku with her confession, she argues with Ichika for being a bitch, and she becomes an unstoppable love train that refuses to stop. Her attitude towards every situation is so out there and so public, it's just an attitude on another level and I love it. She's just the best. She's the best character, hands down. I wanted her to win. I cried myself to sleep at night knowing that she didn't win, but it's fine, it's fine. It's not fine, but you know, I say that to lie to myself. Let's move on to Miku. Miku was definitely the best character in season one. Her arc of accepting Futuro still makes my heart warm to this day. Some of the best moments in the entire entire series is her showing emotion towards Futuro as she breaks away from her Kundere act. I feel an abundance of warmth whenever Miku tries to appeal to Futuro's tastes, whether it works or not, because this face needs to be protected, you know, this face is precious for world peace. Not to mention her confession is also really good, but unfortunately Miku is just a sports car and is no match for the runaway love train that is Nino. Now I still like Miku 
Miku a lot. She's one of the most likable characters out of the Quins. But all you Miku stands out there forgot one thing. The redemption arc conquers all, rivaling only the childhood friend. But if this redemption arc never happened, I would have been Team Miku all the way to the end. And it really makes me sad sometimes to think about that. I don't know how to feel about Itsuki. For me, Itsuki is kind of hard to talk about because I don't really fully understand her position in the manga. Throughout the show, she more or less comes off as an independent sister trying to prove that she doesn't need Futuro, but then later on accepts the fact that Futuro can help her better herself. But to be honest, this is just the extent of Itsuki in the show. In season 2 and in the manga, she gives off a support vibe which is kind of disappointing as she has a lot of potential in the manga. She doesn't even get a confession. I feel like this is due to the fact that Itsuki doesn't get fleshed out as much as the other Quins in the show and it leaves her feeling a bit incomplete unlike the other characters. But unfortunately, there's also another character that doesn't get fleshed out as much as the other sisters. We are now down to best girl of the show. And if it ain't obvious already, I have a big problem with Yotsuba. And that is, she is the most underused character in the show. I generally sometimes forget that she's in the show. And when she pops up on screen, I'm like, oh fuck me, I forgot about her. Which really grinds my gears so much because this shit comes out of nowhere. It's not the fact that they have been hung up about each other for years. It's the fact that we haven't had any moments between these two. These two literally have two or three moments between each other and they're not even that long. So when the final confession happens, I say, okay, but why though? This is my biggest problem with the ending. Now I'm not mad with the ending because my waifu didn't win. That only fuels half my rage. No, I'm mad because the show and the manga didn't convince me that Yotsuba was the winner. When Futuro explains why he chose Yotsuba, he says her determination and positive attitude helped him when he was at a lowest point. Um... When was this? Not only is this not shown to us, but it's a really shit excuse of why he picked her. And it makes it that much worse to remember that most of these girls have given just the same amount of determination as Yotsuba. I seriously would not have a problem with this if this was shown to us, but it isn't. This leaves the ending shallow and kind of rushed, and I really wanted to like this ending, but I didn't feel like it earned it in the slightest. Now, would I say not to watch the show or read the manga? Fuck no. If you want to go read it, go read it. If you want to stop watching it, why aren't you watching it? I'm not the type of person to tell you whether or not you should do something or not. My reviews are always opinionated on my perspective about this show. I'm not going to make a review of a show to say it sucks and that you shouldn't watch it. I'm going to make a review saying it sucks and tell you to watch it. What I'm saying is that if a show has problems, it doesn't mean it's bad and you don't have to watch it. Quintessential Quintuplets is not a bad show. It's borderline great. It just has a lackluster ending that I didn't really like. And when the anime catches up with the manga and it ends, you'll see what I mean. But anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. Leave a like and subscribe down below, and I'll talk to you guys later.